Well, we made it back from Hawaii and it did snow while we were gone. We got probably like, it looked like maybe overall 10 or 11 inches or something like that of snow while we were gone. It was a nice sunny day yesterday. Things were melting a bunch. I kind of scraped things off a little bit yesterday and then we just let it be. It was starting to melt pretty good. And then overnight it started raining at about like 7.30, 8 o'clock last night. So we got another six, seven inches of heavy snowman snow last night. The Hawaii trip was nice. It was a lot of fun. It was good to see forest. And now we're back to winter mode, <laughs> managing and figuring things out, what we got to do around here to get things, keep things going. It was a little tough to leave for a week during winter, but uh, worked out okay. Now we just managed the problems. Our flight home from Hawaii was an overnight flight, and we ended up getting home from the airport somewhere around noon. Everybody was just beat tired from trying to get any kind of rest on the airplane, so we didn't have too high of ambitions that first day. We did need to deal with the snow because, like I had said before, we had gotten about 8 or 10 inches of snow while we were gone that was accumulated and kind of packed in, and we just needed to deal with that. Aside from scraping the snow, everything else could pretty well wait until today to be handled, but we definitely needed to get some good rest. Since it decided to snow an extra six or seven inches overnight again, we had to start out the day by moving snow again. It's definitely safe to say that I think we're all getting tired of the snow and I'm definitely getting tired of having to push it. But whether I'm tired of it or not, it's still gotta get done so that we can get on to other farm chores. We mainly needed to just check all of our bulk feed systems to make sure that they had plenty of feed in all of those and put eyes on all the animals to make sure that everybody was all right. We did have a brand new baby goat born about two days before we got home and he was doing really great. So we were gonna spend a little bit of time with him, checking him out and getting him used to being around us a little bit as well. We also needed to give our little green chicken coop a little bit of attention. There was enough material built up that it was time to get it all scooped up, scraped out, cleaned, and some fresh bedding put down underneath the perch bars as well as refreshing the nesting boxes. The only other th task that we really had in mind today was to go and grab a few more logs out of our log pile to bring them down, cut and split to have ready for some more firewood, since we do have yet another week of really cold temperatures coming up. It is surprising and a little bit reassuring to see just how much the snow has settled and has melted down over the last several weeks. I know it's been piling up on us, but at the same time, we're starting to see tops of fences that were buried in, and things are starting to kind of melt out. It really is beginning to feel like there may just be a light at the end of this dark, wintry tunnel. Of course, as I say that, and we look at the forecast for the next week or so, and all we have is cold temperatures and snowstorms coming. So who knows? On the brighter side, this is the little black buckling that was born a few days ago. He sure is a sweet little guy, and he likes to follow us around really close. So it was pretty cute that Everest got him out of the pen, and he followed him just like a little puppy, all the way up the hill, hung out with us while we were moving logs around, and then when Everest went to put him back, he didn't want to go in initially. He had to chase him down and go bring him back over there to put him back in. It's pretty cute when you kid one that wants to be around you so much like that. This is how our roads are going to look like uh, when all the snow melts. It's a whole different kind of green. Our first morning in Hilo, Hawaii, and we were still adjusting to the time change. So we were all easily up and ready for the sunrise over the ocean. Everest and I both thought a little time lapse of the sunrise would be nice. The first one was mine and this one is his. Our plan for the rest of the day was to pick up forest, go get breakfast, and then make our way to Volcano National Park. Alex Oakley is strong, but not in front of the center. 
Maybe that's why I don't hate snow and sulfur so much. <laughs> The hike through the sulfur vents was really beautiful. Dangling off the edge of the cliff. So this is where ketchup and mustard comes from. <laughs> it was about a five mile round trip hike to the main overlook with several smaller overlooks along the way. The forbidden tree house. Oh. We got a couple of them. That's like really leaning. You think you'll fall in one day? Probably. This is overlooking the main caldera at Kilauea. And man, it is staggering. The sheer size and scale of this place, there is no measurement numbers that can truly do justice to it. You just have to stand here and see it for yourself to even try to understand it. Another really cool sight was the hike down through the old lava tube. It's all open like a cave, but used to flow molten lava through it. Find the heart of the island if you go through this I'm just kidding. <laughs> then we made our way to the seaside where the lava meets the ocean, and I've never seen such amazing variations of electric blue. Our final stop for today was to hike out and see the ancient petroglyphs. Wow, it looks just like you. <laughs> Forrest has been working for the past year in Hilo as a dive instructor, and today he took us to three of his favorite spots to take us out snorkeling all day. This was the third and last stop for the day, and the boys mostly spent the time in the surf, swimming around. It was kind of hard to believe, but I think we spent probably around six hours total in the water swimming today. Forrest was going to have to work the next two days, so we thought that would give us an opportunity to make the loop around the north end of the island, stay a night in Kona, and then make the loop around the south end of the island on our way back. The first stop we made on our loop around the north end was at a cacao farm where we got to see the whole process of start to finish of making the chocolates that they make there on the farm. Our next stop along the way was at Akaka Falls State Park. We made the short but stunning loop to hike down through these deep ravines full of jungle foliage to see the massive and beautiful falls. After this stop, we just took our time enjoying the scenery as we made our way around the north end of the island. We got into Kona just in time to get settled in and make our way across the street to enjoy the sunset on the local beach. This was our only planned stop on the south loop the next day, and I tried so many times, but there was no way I could pronounce that. A genuinely fascinating sight. The next day we went snorkeling south of Hilo at yet another site, and Forrest brought his underwater camera this time. Our last site that we needed to see before we left was Mauna Kea Observatories. We were able to go up here after snorkeling and get some amazing views. Our rental vehicle was not a four-wheel drive, so we weren't able to drive all the way to the observatories. But like many others, we were able to hike to the top of a cinder cone near the visitor center to enjoy the views near sunset. We had such a great trip 
and we're finally ready to make our way back home. <laughs>